traditional palette. So according to this handout, we have the tints, the tones, and the shades. And then I just used my stencil to make these four boxes. And um, I think for this one, what I want to do is kind of be more free in the under layer and then come on the top with um, predominantly high key for this one. And say middle key. And this is just, it could change <laughs> because uh, sometimes things change um, when you're making plans, right? And this would be low key. And then this one I'll just leave open. And that just allows me to kind of really play with um, the colors underneath here. Uh, just knowing that what I have are tints, tones, and shades. So I've got a new palette here. I needed to replace the tracing paper. And here I've got some, you know, the main colors of blue, orange, yellow, red, green, purple. I might have to add to that. But for now, I just want to kind of have a loose um, underpainting. I have some airbrush medium here. So I'll just flip my brush with that and start to dip into these colors. And then I'm going to need some white. I'm just going to kind of mix it right here on the paper. There's my tint of yellow. Might be a little streaky because I'm mixing on the paper, but that might actually be good in the underpainting. Now I'm going to put down the colors. I have started with yellow, CAD yellow light, blue, and CAD orange. Just kind of keeping track. So this one was just red and blue. Two colors, a warm and a cool. Some airbrush me. Maybe green. Where it goes over the yellow, it kind of dulls it, and where it goes over the purple, it uh, looks pretty, pretty good. It's still pure. So if I come down here, and now I'm gonna bring it over here, and uh, I need this. I really want to water. Make it into more of a glaze. It's pretty wet. So glaze is not really quieting too much down. It's uh, because you can see right through it. So 
still have a lot more to go, but I'm really enjoying the palette. It's really fun. I'm continuing to work on this one down here. Uh, it's had a couple days just to dry, and I'm going to uh, try and expand the range of color. It feels kind of um, like this is really bright, but then everything else is kind of dull. So I just want to add a little bit more interest in the this layer and explore the palette. This is a traditional color palette. That's gradation, kind of like that. I'm trying to think about connecting shapes a little bit, making bigger shapes instead of so many small ones. Every time you change value and if you're like trying to add to some area you're you could be adding a brand new shape that's why uh, I mean you could be adding a really noticeable brand new shape so that's why like if I were to go into this area I'd want to really match that value otherwise I'm breaking up a big shape and making it into smaller shapes I think for right now I might just leave this pretty much the way it is for this layer and then come back to it with uh, adding texture with the handle a bit and want to go with um, very pale glaze down here. See, when you keep your values really close, you can add all these subtleties without it feeling like you're breaking big shapes into small shapes, and that's really the fun of it, at least for me. These soft, subtle transitions that feel very sensitive, um, sensitively felt, I guess. Amazing how quickly something like a strata painting can turn into what looks like a landscape, not even really trying. It's a good way to combine abstraction with some, or semi, make it semi-abstract so that it's a little bit suggestive of a landscape. That's pretty dry. I mean, there are a lot of things you can do to kind of um, change an edge like that from even a blade, which, you know, it's just paper, but if you're careful, you can kind of soften the edge. It doesn't have to just be only while it's wet or only with sandpaper. This is a different way of removing subtraction get kind of a fine, fine line because the blade is so sharp. So any place I want to kind of soften or change an edge. This one's light, pretty light. That's pretty mid-tone. This one, and that's pretty dark. So this is my middle key, high key, and this is supposed to be my low key. Wow. I think I'm going to make this one my low key instead. This one's my low key. This one was like, I, w I didn't want to really make my mind up ahead of time what key it was going to be, but if this is going to be low key, then midtones and lights are really going to stand out. So I added, and now I'm subtracting small areas here just for that lost and found feeling of line. Those little lines I scratched in here, they still show as the glaze goes into that. So there's the line. Just a little bit more. Okay, so that's good for this traditional palette. I think I'm going to call this a wrap. And interested to see if you're doing the traditional palette. So I hope you'll show it in Facebook. Hi, everyone.